I think we just need to focus on the simplicity of what can happen in that two week break that can help you recharge. You might have students who are like, Miss, can I use the Lego? I've got an idea with a Lego to build something that can show you something that meant a lot to me in the holidays. Maybe it was Nonna's spaghetti. Who knows? I think if you take in that first day coming back after the holidays, your key word is simplify or simplicity. I think you're going to have a really good day back for everyone. Welcome to Rainbow Skies for New Teachers, where we're all about bite-sized tips and simple strategies for bright and busy new teachers. If you're in your first few years of your career and want to make the roller coaster ride of teaching more fun, streamlined and stress-free, you're in the right place. We're Ashley and Alicia, the dynamic duo from Rainbow Sky Creations, and we're excited to be your teacher mentors on the go. There are rainbows ahead, my friend. And together, we're unstoppable. Let's get into today's episode. Rainbow Sky Creations acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this podcast on, the Dharawal and Wujak Noongar people. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. Amplify Music Education creates contemporary, ready-made music lessons designed for all classroom teachers, allowing them to deliver the most amazing, memorable classroom music lessons they've ever taught, all without needing any prior music experience, yet still meeting all of the curriculum outcomes. But it doesn't stop there. The Amplify platform is loaded with resources that will complement your teaching and student well-being beyond the music classroom. It's not just fun for the students, it's fun for everyone. Sign up for your free trial today at amplifymusiceducation.com.au. We are back with Rainbow Skies for new teachers. Hey, Alicia, how are you this week? Hey, Ash. I am well. Life is good. Summer's starting to wind down. I feel like the temperatures increase in February and then they start to go down. So I'm finding I can function a lot better when I'm operating at uh, high 20s or mid low 30s. I can't do high 40s anymore. (laughs) Yeah, we're talking about degrees Celsius. Yes. Can't function over 100 Fahrenheit, my friends in America. And that's what I was trying to say. I can't function higher than that. (laughs) Well, today we are doing a little bit of a proactive episode. We're going to be talking about the first day back after a break with your students and some activities that you can try to get in there, get them engaged and start that first day back at school after a holiday, really with a bang and with a bit of excitement. But we know that some teachers are going to be listening to this, especially if you're in Australia and and you're either going back next week or you've just started the school holidays and you're thinking, girls, why are you even got this episode coming out now? But we wanted you to be prepared. That's it. We wanted you to be so prepared that we're recording this episode in February. That's how prepared we want you to be. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm you- letting you know what's happening behind the scenes here, all of our little secrets. It is actually February, which is probably why we're talking about the weather because we're just sweating it up right now. But hopefully by the time we listen to this, <laughs> no one will be sweating too much. Okay, so if you're listening to this and your school holidays have just started, pause it, come back if you want to have a little break away from thinking about teaching. If you're going back next week, this is going to be perfect timing for you. And remember, you can always come back to this episode after each term break because these are going to be really great ideas that will carry you through every single term and starting afresh. The beginning of each term is like a little mini beginning of the year. You just need to ease your way into it just the first day or so, and then you're off and running. That's what I've always found anyway. I absolutely agree with you. And what I love about the start of every term, I feel like it's a fresh start. It's a fresh start. What happened last term happened last term. Let's start afresh. And even though the curriculum is crammed with things that we have to be doing, taking that time out on the first day to reconnect is really important because you as a teacher might be super excited to dive straight into the learning, but you've probably got a few kids who might have been a bit apprehensive about going back to school on the first day. They were just like, oh, I've been having such a good time at home that I don't really want to go back into the routine of school. Or you might have those kids who really can't wait to get back to school because all their friends are there. So you kind of have to take the time to go a bit smooth in into the first lesson leading up to recess. Like it could be once recess is done, you can dive straight into the curriculum and get on with the term program. But give yourself those first two periods in the morning just to have a bit of fun. Yeah, definitely. It's always like differentiating for our students' emotional needs doing this. We're really making sure that those kids that need that little bit of extra support, that little bit of extra love and that connection after being at home with parents and loved ones are getting what they need. And same with you as a teacher. Like you don't want to be going into a million miles an hour either. Yeah. 
I know I don't anymore. <laughs> no, me neither. I don't either. You might even want to start that first term back. Everybody has a hot chocolate. You know what I mean? Or everyone sits down and has a little Milo and you all have a little chat about what you did in the holidays. It could just be a really relaxed tone, you know, or everyone has a cup of juice or something. Could pep them all up or you might want to choose another beverage of choice, but just kind of like easing them in. So the five activities we're going to give you today is you can incorporate the whole theme of holidays and discussing what what everyone has been doing in the last couple of weeks. And I think we also need to be conscious of that some students won't be having as exciting holidays as other students, but all these activities that we give you today, you can make it so it's as simple as focused of what was some delicious food that you had in the holidays or TV shows, like just keeping it really neutral, especially if you've got some kids who want to rave about their holiday to Disneyland, you can allow them to do that, but don't make that your core focus of like, oh, who went somewhere different? Because a lot of the kids probably probably didn't. So be conscious of your socioeconomic situation in your classroom. It's going to vary from school to school, suburb to suburb. Yeah. And some kids holidays isn't the best time for them. I don't know. I think I feel like it was you, Alicia, who was talking about this when it used to be a really big thing when we came back from school holidays. Teachers used to do the very first activity was to write a recount about your holiday time. And we were discussing about how some kids really isn't a great time for them. They might be in households that parents are working or they're not getting the love and the care that they really need and school is their safe place. And I'm sure it was you that said they could either write a recount about what they did in the holidays or write about their dream holiday. Yes. And I really love that idea too, that they can get that creative juices flowing. They get to write about something that they really enjoy. So if you're going to go down that track of doing a recount, which is not one of our ideas today, perhaps give students an opportunity to write something creative if they don't want to write about their holiday. If you are going to do a recount, we will put a link in the show notes to a really fun little template that we have. Yes. Because writing is one of the little suggestions we have, but we wanted to take a little twist on it. So you could do write about your dream holiday. You could do a writing template where they might not even want to write. You've got your year ones, they might want to draw. You might have a year six student who wants to draw. They might do a cartoon strip. That's fine. You might want to take it to the next level and actually get out some Play-Doh or modeling clay and they create a 3D model of something that happened in the holidays. Like it could have been a dog they saw down the park and they played with it. I think we just need to focus on the simplicity of what can happen in that two-week break that can help you recharge. You might have students who are like, Miss, can I use the Lego? I've got an idea with the Lego to build something that can show you something that meant a lot to me in the holidays. Maybe it was Nonna's spaghetti. Who knows? I think if you take in that first day coming back after the holidays, your key word is simplify or simplicity, I think you're going to have a really good day back for everyone. For sure. Okay, so we've gone off our order, Alicia, of what we were going to talk about, but I don't think that really matters. My question is, are you you okay with it? We're we're deviating. (laughs) I know. Type A me is like, oh my gosh, we went down to point three. Now we're coming back up to point one, but it's all right. I think I can cope. Okay, so we're going to come back up and talk about an icebreaker that you could play on the first day with your students. And we've spoken about icebreakers before on the podcast and they're great fun and they're not just something that can be limited to the beginning of a school year. An icebreaker that we want to talk about today is two truths and a lie. And Alicia, I thought that maybe we could play together. I'm putting you completely on the spot. So I'm going to go first. Okay. Yeah, you go first. So basically the idea behind it, if you don't know what the game is, people need to go, you go around a circle or you might choose students who feel confident and they need to tell you two things that are true about themselves and one thing that's a lie and everyone needs to work out what is the truth and which one is the lie. So they've got to point out the lie basically. Okay. So these are my three. I'm right-handed. I hate bananas. Mm. And my favorite thing to do on a holiday is a puzzle with my son. I had no idea that you hated bananas. Didn't you? No, because you're left-handed, not (laughs) (gasps) right-handed. I am left-handed. I feel like you knew that was a bit obvious. But anyway, have you got three? Well, I've got three that could link into if you're coming back after a break. So I played with a dog called Rudy. I ate ice cream and I went jet skiing. Alicia loves ice cream, you guys. So that would definitely be a yes. 
I'm thinking the jet skiing. Yeah, no, I haven't gone jet skiing. If I put paddle boarding, that would be the truth. And I love yeah. dogs and our neighbor's dog is Rudy. So my kids love playing with Rudy. We get out there as much as we can. See how simple that was. And it's led to us having a discussion and learning a bit more about each other. So give it a try. Yeah, it's a really fun game. Another fun game we like to play is Classroom Detectives, but we have spoken about that one on the podcast before. Basically, the students fill out a little slip answering some simple questions about themselves. You pop them all in a hat and then during brain breaks during the day, you pick out one, read out some of the clues and the kids need to guess who it is. That is a freebie. I'll make sure that that one is in the show notes as well, but they're two really good icebreakers. Yes, Go to episode 15 if you want to learn more about how to use the classroom detectives and we got a bit of a twist on that one as well. Now, the third thing, because we've covered two already, is do a (laughs) refresher on teamwork. Get your class working together as a team. You might have a theme of the term. I always kind of think back to my year three, year four classes. So you might be learning about celebrations and you might have found this amazing picture that you could blow up on the photocopier and cut it up into pieces and they have to work as a team to put that puzzle together or just color in that picture, like color it in. And then at the end, they're putting the pieces together. Mm, That's fun. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with another puzzle theme was if you've got a value you really want to remind the class about at the beginning of the term, like maybe we're slipping a bit on respect or we want to talk more about kindness or maybe it's about resilience and you find a really cool picture book and you have a spare five minutes in the holidays or at the start of that lesson in the morning, you might just want to quickly photocopy those pages and you could just minimize them. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a digital copy out there you can print out, but make sure it's all within copyright. But you get that picture book and all the pieces of paper and you might want to spread it around the classroom and the kids have to go get a piece and they have to put the story together. Like they have to put the story together before you read the story. So right then and there you got teamwork and then you're going to be reading a story and learning about a value that you can talk about after that. Yeah, that's fun. There's other simple ones you can do, especially if you're teaching younger students, like line up in one long class line from shortest to tallest or from tallest to shortest or in age order, like what months you were born in or even in alphabetical order. That's a fun one to get the kids to really get up, get moving, work together as a team and get to know each other a little bit again, because some of those relationships, they may have not seen each other for the whole of the holiday. So it's a really great way to get them up, get them talking again, get them talking to other kids in the class that aren't necessarily their little buddies, their little mates. Yeah. It actually reminded me like of the younger years, you could just break them up into small groups and they have to make a letter, get down on the floor, make the letter A, yes. make the letter C, or you could get in your older kids. They have to do a freeze frame shot of something that looks like excitement, or you could do feelings, or you could do a scenario being helpful and kind they have to do like a statue pose that was just a yeah thought. in so, the drama world they call those tabloid tabloid do they tabloids yeah i'm gonna say yes i'm <laughs> i'm my husband knows that isn't my forte i fully went out <laughs> so confident to say that and then i questioned myself but that is a really fun activity to do that would be a really great one to do at the end of the day i always like to say to kids when we're doing activities like that represent a color do something that represents the color purple or the oh. color maroon and it's really great because some kids just can't do it because it's too abstract other kids really get into it kids talk about the objects that they see that are those colors or how those colors make them feel. So yeah, that is a great suggestion. Yeah. So teamwork, get your class working together as a team. Now, the fourth one is one I actually love to do. And I probably would do this every year in the last five years I was teaching is we'd do a holiday bingo. And there are a few reasons why I love this because it it did take a whole lesson. (laughs) So it was a nice ease in, but we'd all get down together on the mat and we'll just do a big brainstorm and I'd get the kids to bring down their whiteboards. They could write it, they could draw it. And we'll just do a big brain dub of all the different types of things we could have done in the holidays, like all the different types of foods we might've eaten, all the different places we might've visited, all the different kind of people we might've seen. If some people had gone on a holiday or they had left their home for a few days, like all the different modes of transport. And then we would collate a kind of collaborative list and I would stick to no more than 30. 
And I'd usually be typing this up on the interactive whiteboard and I'd give every activity a number. And then they would draw up a three by three grid, a four by four grid or a five by five grid, depending on their age. And right then and there, they're having to, you know, they're having to like, would either fold paper to make the grid or would have to use our rulers. So right then and there, they're already having to like cognitively do a bit. Then they'd fill in their bingo board. I mean, you could make it simple and give them a printed out bingo board if you want to speed the lesson up. And then I'd do a random number generator and like the kids would have chosen to fill their board with one of those 30 activities and then I'll get a random number generator up and it would just be like number 22 who's got that on their bingo board and you could play it the first person to complete their whole bingo board or the first person to complete a row and it was a great discussion and a bit of fun and I recommend it you know what I love about that too and I feel like I'm putting on my mum hat here but it kind of gives kids an idea of other things they can do at home that they may not have thought of so like if kids are baking cookies or playing with play-doh they're like oh we haven't pulled out the play-doh in a long time or we never play soccer out the front with our neighbors and make it a competition just give them a few other ideas of things that they could do yeah it's just saying anything that you did that you weren't at school doing is something we want to hear about it's a really good way like you said to get the kids thinking about oh what else could I try and do on the weekend that I hadn't thought about yeah that would be a really great brain break too for the rest of the week if they kept on to those bingo boards and you had five minutes on Thursday before lunch come on everyone pull out your bingo boards Let's have another game of it. I bet the kids would absolutely eat that up. Yeah, and you might have the kids go, I've got five. Maybe we can switch out. I've got five other ideas we could add to that. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I never thought to do that because the curriculum just filled up my day. I had no time. (laughs) I know. (laughs) But it's a good one. I like it. All right, number five is create a fun display. I always like to, at the end of the term, I take everything down in my classroom. So I start afresh and then put everything up. Alicia's face is like, what? And I've had that reaction so many times from teachers and I don't know where I got it from. But I like to take it down at least anything that's theme related that we're not learning about in that particular term. So we've got fresh space. I agree with that. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I don't take down like maths posters and word balls and things, things that we're using all the time. But I do like to take down any sort of work and start afresh. Anyway, I know, type A in me, please forgive me. But I just want to say, I think there's a lot of yeah. validity in what you're doing there. It's like clean slate, fresh start, no distractions, let's delve in together. So I can see lots of benefits to it. I just did a jaw drop because I'm like, you are so efficient and having the time to do that. Congratulations, you. <laughs> but sorry to like interrupt your train of thought. That's fine. Thank you for making me feel better about it. (laughs) I appreciate it. I was saying that one great thing to do is to get something new and fresh up into your classroom. And something that Alicia and I have been creating lots of in recent times is fun 3D display. You get a few different templates and the kids fold them in half and glue them together so they become like a little 3D object. Now we've got one that is a light bulb and it's all about different goal setting and things that they're looking forward to in the term and that could be a really great way to get the kids involved in starting the term, starting afresh, setting some new goals or some new things that they're looking forward to learning about and you just getting a little bit more of an insight on who they are, what you know about them, learning new things about them. That resource we often say it's a fun one to use at the very beginning of the new year, but you could use it any time. And there's no reason as to why you should say, oh, that's an only beginning of the year lesson. Yeah. We've got another one, like a growth mindset one, where we talk about the importance of resilience. And that can be a really good one to start the term with, where we talk about words of empowerment and the people that we appreciate around us and the benefit of the power of yet, you know, I can't do that yet. And we have lots of different types of these 3D displays that The kids enjoy doing. There's so much of those fine motor skills. They're having to think and it leads to discussion. And then you can hang them up and you've got this great display. Everyone's had a sense of accomplishment. Like they've started that first or second day back at school going, I did something that looks great and it's up there for everyone to see. If you wanted an overall theme for your first day, you could go down that growth mindset path because really you could do activities that incorporate teamwork, that have a little icebreaker. You could read some literature around growth mindset. They could do a little activity like that. We've got an activity for little ones. If you teach younger students that are growth mindset yetis, so a little play on the word yet, 
in creating a little Yeti and they can come up with some growth mindset statements and they can decorate their little Yeti. So we'll make sure that those are in the show notes too. But that's a really fun way of having a bit of a theme. You're still contributing towards that social emotional learning that you will want to happen in your classroom, but you're also having a bit of a slower pace. You're building those connections and it's not too much on that first day. Yeah. Anything that involves getting their learning up on the walls, I think is really empowering to the students. So yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I was just going to say that was our five. It was, you know. Recap. Yeah, it was like to get writing or drawing or constructing about what they did in the holidays, playing a little icebreaker game like two truths and a lie, a refresher on teamwork, get them working together as a team. And I shared my favorite holiday bingo and lastly, create a fun display. Yeah. Yeah. And our bonus idea is stick with a theme, like a growth mindset theme oh, yes. across the entire day. I feel like we just slipped that one in there. I think that's a very good one, though. Like, it's easy to do. And yeah. I guarantee you'll enjoy creating those lessons. So you'll be excited to get back to school. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, you know what? There's one thing that teachers really struggle with when they're going back to school is that you've had this lovely holiday. You might have done a few bits of schoolwork, but you feel like you're in that vortex of time being sucked away from you like it always feels when you're in the middle of a school term I feel like it just hits you smack bang in the face as soon as you're back at school yeah it can raise the blood pressure for sure so if you're feeling like you don't have enough hours in the day then we've got a lovely free e-guide ebook for you with eight top tips to save you time in your week so we're going to link that in the show notes and it's got some really amazing tips that you can apply straight away to get minutes if not hours back in your week. Yeah. Who doesn't want a bit more precious time in their week? So we've put our best tips together in that free little ebook and you'll be able to grab that by clicking the link in the show notes. Okay. Well, Alicia, that is a wrap for today. Is a wrap. And thank you so much for letting us be in your ears. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Until then, there are rainbows ahead, my friend. And together we're unstoppable. <laughs>